Hi, yeah, I'm Sean from Birmingham City University, as it says here. And we have a, a little kind of project that's been going on for about a year and a half now in conjunction with Queen Mary, where Breck did a presentation this morning, um, which is the SAFE project. So we have this kind of overarching project title of intelligent music production that Breck was talking about this morning. So it's kind of intelligent music production, as it says. But we're, we're looking at this problem of the language of music production. So I'm sure lots of people have, are producers or have talked to producers, and there, there is this language you use when you're talking about how to make audio. So the bass needs to be tighter, the vocals need to be more prominent. And then on the other side of that, the tools you use to achieve these effects have these kind of low-level parameters which relate to how the actual effects work. So you have a, a ratio on a, compressor, on a compressor or a density knob on a reverb and things like that. And there's some, you know, magic or complex relationships between these parameters down here and these end results up here. And that's kind of what we want to find out. So what do we want to do? We want to provide kind of abstractions between those two kind of domains there, the kind of audio processor parameter domain and this kind of more semantic domain of tightness, warmth, crunchiness, whatever terms people use to describe audio. And in doing this, we hope, you know, people will be able to more efficiently make music. So rather than you having to have years of experience knowing that you've got to tweak this knob and that knob and then bring in one of these effects and do all this to get your effect, you just kind of go, oh, I want to make this warm and the system will suggest something for you. And while we're doing all that, can we extract a load of useful metadata? Because us researchers just love data in all its forms. So get as much of that as we can as a, a bonus icing on the cake. So how do we do this? We've got Lee Perry here, just being confused at something. But so there, there were a few ideas we came up with. I mean, you could interview producers. That wastes producers' time. It takes a lot of time. You've got to bring them to you or go to them. We could observe producers, but then you're there being annoying in the background. They're trying to produce their track, and you're like, oh, what are you doing there? Oh, that's interesting. Oh, that's really good. That's annoying for them. Then there's kind of completely the other end of the spectrum write your own DAW and just pull all the data, observe everything they do whilst producing in this DAW. Lots of problems with that. Takes years to write a DAW. I'm sure there's lots of problems with horrible things which I don't want to think about. Who's going to want to adopt this brand new DAW that's been written by a load of researchers and probably doesn't work properly? Everyone has their own DAW that they like to use. So we came up with the SAFE project and we have a moose. It's not even a moose, but we call it a moose, for some reason. <laughs> um, so the SAFE project comprises of a suite of audio plugins. So this is kind of our, our middle ground between asking producers stuff and making a DAW. Everyone uses plugins to produce stuff, unless there's some weird people out there who don't. But we can, we've got access to the audio people are processing because it's coming through our plugin. We've got access to what they're doing with the parameters to set that. And we can, you know, we're using Juice. We can use the networking functionality in that to send off all this data. And we can analyze it elsewhere. So basically, in these plugins, you can do your production. And then there's a little box in the corner. And you say, oh, I just made these drums punchy with this compressor. And then it analyzes the audio there, sends all that data off to our server, and we can, we can analyze it. And this is our website down here. You can go to that later if you want. It's got a moose in the corner. It's got a video on it. It's got everything. So it's just a little um, kind of diagram of the system here. This is our compressor here. You've got the little box down in the corner. You write something in there. You twiddle the parameters. You make your drums punchy. You write punchy in the box. You hit save. It takes out loads of data sends it to our server, and then there's this kind of feedback as well. So we can collate all the data of people who've made drums punchy with the compressor, do some clever stuff with that, lots of machine learning algorithms and things, and say, oh, this is generally how people make drums punchy with a compressor. And 
they can type in punchy and hit load, and it will set the parameters for them. So this is kind of feedback loop. And the more data we get, the kind of hopefully more accurate these semantically loaded terms will be. So all the data we take, we take whatever they write into the box, a list of semantic terms. Um, we probably didn't really specify what we wanted people to write in the box very well. There's lots of random rubbish in our database. Some people write useful things in, but there's a lot of rubbish. Um, and then we've got whatever the settings, the parameters, the plugin was. And then features of the audio signal before the processing was applied and after the processing was applied. So we can see what the plugin actually did to the audio. So like low level features, kind of spectral centroids and MFCCs and any MIR people out there will, will love to talk about audio features. And then a bit of metadata which helps us segregate stuff. So, you know, what genre are they producing? Where are they in the world? What language do they use? Because there's, you know, people in different languages use much different words to describe audio. And we, we analyze all that. And then I've talked about the loading already, so they can type in a, a word and say, oh, yeah. And maybe some metadata as well and load in punchy for their drums. And, yeah, we have... That doesn't work quite as well as it should at the moment. But we need more data. That's, that's the thing now. So we'll watch a little video that just kind of shows these plugins in action. Hopefully the audio is working. Like I'm trying to keep my pants up. Hands up. Never drop the ball when I'm around. I'm the champ. You a rookie. Hey friend, this is good, but I think um, the synth needs more crunk. Let's dial it in. These drums need to be the fatness. Let's load it in from safe. Rap, let's celebrate. Up with this loop, so I can keep my fans up. That's why I hold the belt, like I'm trying to keep my pants up. Hands up, never drop the ball when I'm around. I'm the champ, you a rookie and won't even yes. mess around. See me knocking down this game with these punches and these hooks. Breath taking like I hit you with some punches and some hooks. Yeah, you know I never. These results are statistically significant. <laughs> it's a, a small little insight into how researchers view music producers. Um, obviously, all the words in there were not the kind okay, of words thanks, we're after. For the introduction. <laughs> Although, maybe they are. Um, so, We've got those four plugins. We have a reverb, we have a compressor, we have an EQ, and we have a distortion. So for those and who don't know me, uh, we're not, we don't really have the time to sit there and develop amazing DSP. So they're not the, the greatest <laughs> plugins in the world. They don't sound great, um, but they, they, they do the job. And we've got quite a bit of data coming in now. Um, but it's all built around this Today, juice I'm module that I made for it so other people could easily develop stuff. So if anyone is 
fancying making plugins with this functionality, there's, there's a juice module out there for it. So, Your YouTube autoplay is on. It's oh, is it? Is it playing in the background? Uh, that's uh, Josh Rice from Queen Mary University there. Um, so, a juice module for making safe plugins. It's on GitHub. Now this is just automatically playing itself. Um, it's on GitHub, and there's documentation, uh, Doxygen-type documentation on GitHub as well. Um, I can give those links to people if they want. You can email us through the website and ask about it, or well, the links are all on the website. So it all just there's just a safe audio processor class, which just inherits the juice audio processor class, and just kind of hides all this functionality away inside there. So there are three things you basically need to implement there. Your kind of signal processing, your MIDI, and your parameter handling, like you do in any plugin. The audio analysis stuff, and then the saving and loading of parameters. So the signal processing, very much the same as with the Juice Audio Processor class, apart from Process Block and Prepare to Play got lots of stuff hidden in them, so they then call this plugin processing and plugin preparation class. So whatever you would have put in these two, now go in these two. Not, not too hard. And there is, I kind of wrote this about a month before the parameter stuff went into Juice, so it's got its own parameter management system, which is maybe a little obsolete now. But I use the same function name, so that is a benefit to me. So then the audio analysis, so we're moving away from what Juice does and into something a bit more specialist here. So when it's asked to save a semantic term, you've typed in crunk or whatever, and hit save, it records a section of audio and before and after the processing and does analysis. Uh, analysis on it and sends all that stuff off. So there's, there's kind of two ways you can do that. There's a C library which is kind of built into the module called libextract which has kind of basic feature analysis stuff. And then there's a developed at Queen Mary, there's a kind of set of audio analysis kind of plugin format I guess is the word called the vamp plugins which you can host and they provide more advanced analysis stuff. So LibExtract is this C, C library, and it's got kind of spectral centroid, fundamental tracking, MFCCs, kind of the, the standard bread and butter of all kind of MIR stuff. And it's, it's just built into the module, and there's just this nice little function you can call in your constructor, add LibExtract feature, and then there's just a, a series of kind of enums there with all the class name, all the feature names, and you can extract any, everything or specific features. And then there's VAMP plugins as well, so if there's someone out, some crazy feature out there and someone's developed a VAMP plugin for it, the, the Juice safe, the, the safe audio processor class, sorry, hosts these VAMP plugins and can use those features. Or you can write your own VAMP plugin to add the feature functionality or just hard code it into your plugin, whatever, whatever way you're going to go. And then there's this add VAMP plugin function for that in there. So here's just a little simple kind of very basic constructor for one of these plugins we're inheriting from safe audio processor. We add some parameters and then we add a lib extract feature, the spectral centroid, and we add this, this vamp plugin which is this harmonic pitch class stuff. So it, it kind of, it's like um, chroma stuff basically. And what's the probability of, of it being a certain pitch in chroma. So then there's the, how it actually goes about that analysis. So by default, it analyzes five seconds of audio in 496 sample chunks with a, a hop size of 496. So it's just splitting it up into chunks, extracting all the features from those and bunging it all into a file and sending it off to the server. But you can override all of that. So if whatever, for whatever reason you want to analyze longer or shorter amounts of audio and certain um, kind of MIR feature extraction methods you require to actually have a smaller hop size than your frame size, so you've got this overlap stuff going on. So you can change all that with these functions, the get analysis frame size and step size and the get analysis time functions. Just override them and away we go. And then 
The third part is just saving and loading. So all that functionality is in there as well. Um, basically, in your plugins editor, you need to provide some kind of uh, text box for them to write the term in. You need a load button, you need a save button. There's also the metadata panel as well where they can type in the genre and the uh, instrument and various other things. So that needs to be provided in your editor. There are kind of the actual safe audio processor editor class here has those as members already. So if you inherit that, you can just place them wherever you want and all the functions there. So you just give it a button and it does it, but you can do your own if you want because it's quite kludgy and they don't look very amazing. A gray text box, you could probably just oh, like re rewrite the paint method as well, I guess. So yeah, that's all in there as well. And if you want to know how all that works, I mean, you can read the documentation, but essentially you need to call the start recording function on the, the processor class and that'll say, oh, I'm going to start recording. It'll record the audio and analyze it and send it off. And this gets handed a, the descriptor that you've typed in and some metadata that's been typed in as well. And a kind of flag which just says, oh, save it to the server or save it locally. So you can actually have this so it just saves locally to an XML file rather than sending it off to the server. For situations where you don't have network on the computer and you can take the XML file later and upload it via our website or something. And then the other way around, loading stuff, there's these two names, the name of this function, I've, I've belittled myself, that's a terrible name for a function, get server data. But anyway, so you call either one of these, so load semantic term will load from an XML file on the system, get server data will load a semantic term from the server, that's probably what it should be called. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to change that one day. <laughs> and basically that's just all through HTTP requests, so... Um, if you just look in, this is the class that in my plugins that does it, the safe descriptor load screen. So you've got in there, it just kind of does a HTTP request with a, a few kind of get parameters that say, oh, look, I want the data for this um, descriptor. And it pulls all that out and changes the parameters on your plugin. So um, how long have we got? I mean, I did bring up a little kind of introducer project of the sample plugin from the module repository. Um, but we probably don't have time to look at that. But it's all, all commented and stuff, and it says what everything does. Um, so you can look at that in your own time if you, if you really fancy. For now, we will look at our plans for the future. Here's a really futuristic looking man that I found on the internet. So this is what we're working on at the moment, is we've got that data and we're trying to come up with some intuitive interfaces for it. So this reduced dimensionality interface here. So you get this kind of 2D slider here and, well, there'll be a selector. So this is saying like you've got a warmth dimension and a bright dimension and you can move this around and it'll change the parameter space over here according to whatever we've analyzed on the server. So you get this kind of 2D interface, which is kind of cool. If anyone's going to DAFX, we actually have a prototype of this up and running, which we'll be showing at DAFX. So if you're there, come and, come and speak to us. It'll be cool. And then a kind of much further into the future is applying this without using our, our kind of juice module for it, just saying, can we have some web API where we just say, oh, I've got these parameters on an abstract plugin, and I want something to be warm, and it's a bass guitar. And we go, oh, we can do that. So yeah, just, just do that. And it works. Uh, so lots of kind of fancy machine learning and optimization techniques. But we, we haven't got this far yet. This is, this is much, much too far in the future. And then on top of that as well, at the moment, someone needs to know, oh, I want to make this punchy. But they have to pick the effect first. So they've got to say, oh, I'm going to put a compressor on that to make it punchy. Or I'm going to put an EQ on that to make it punchy. Whereas a complete novice might not even know what those effects do. And they just say, oh, I want this to be punchy, but I don't know. And we'll just go, put a compressor on it and do this. And then they don't have a job anymore. And <laughs> we just rule the world. That is the end goal. Thanks. <laughs> Thank you.
Thanks a lot. Um, we have like five minutes, so. Hello. I saw on one slide there you had a bullet point about loading any plugin. Would it be possible for you to load, to iterate over the user's plugins and load any plugin, iterate over the parameters? And then, then they could use a, a, any pro plugin, like the Waves plugins or whatever, and you could get it's data. It's conceivably from that. possible. Um, it's one kind of uh, thing that's hard with just any random plugin. We can get the parameter names, but it's, it's kind of useful to know what that parameter is going to do inside the internal DSP. Because um, some things, parameter names, are, are ridiculously abstract. So um, it's, it's kind of useful to be able to, that's why with the safe plugins, we know exactly how they all relate to the DSP. So these kind of machine learning things get a bit a simpler there. Whereas if you've got just any plugin anywhere, it's kind of this optimization, you know, reducing a cost function type technique. So it's randomly moving the parameters until you kind of get there and then, you know, kind of standard op optimization technique type stuff. Thank you. Uh, you only mentioned the effects. Uh, have you considered uh, doing this on instruments? Yeah, that, that, that's come up. Um, it's, it's possible you could make synths with this. Obviously, you've got no incoming audio, so you just yeah. either get garbage data or um, a load of zeros. It depends what happens for the input audio features. But the module should work with a synthesizer. Um, have you thought about adding any sort of rating functionality in the plugin itself so people can rate the mappings? Yeah, it's... <laughs> we, we went over a lot of this when we were first coming out of it, and it's kind of this, we wanted to be as minimal as possible with our intrusion into the production workflow, um, which is, is hard to get all the data you want, because there's a, there's a separate panel that slides out, so I've got a kind of logic session open here. Um, with, oh no, where's the plugins? There it is. So when you hit this one, that comes across and they can put in all the genre and stuff. And, you know, it's, it's kind of hidden away so it doesn't intrude too much, but hardly any people fill it in. So we've, we're left guessing as to what, what genre it was and things. Um, a rating thing was, was something we, we were talking about, but we left it out. But it could could be added at some point. Um, yeah, really, really interesting subject area. Um, <clears throat> I was wondering, from the data that you've collected so far, um, what are you you know what statistically significant <laughs> results uh, do you have about like is it you were mentioning warmth and brightness as like part of your demo? Are you are you have some pretty good idea of what those might be? Um, so at the moment. We're mostly doing cluster analysis on it. So we're looking at similarities between descriptors. So we've, we've got all these kind of cluster graphs. I, uh, I don't have any on this machine. Um, but you, you kind of, so you're looking at the distortion. You see that crunch and um, decimated uh, are kind of grouped closely together. So those, those descriptors decide, describe similar things. And then the other end, you've got kind of warm and uh, pronounced and sofa. Sofa is a really popular descriptor in the distortion for some reason. I don't know what sofa means, but it means the same as warm and like prominent. So <laughs> that's, that's something we found out. How do you deal with a situation where the producer's using your plugin and you think they have the drums punchy, but in reality they're just not very good at it and they tag it <laughs> as punchy, and it just, it just sounds bad. But how do you deal with that situation? Well, I mean, there is this little thing in the metadata here, production experience. We're assuming that people who have a lot of experience are better. <laughs> um, I d um, it's just kind of, basically, we, when we're analyzing it, we um, look for kind of correlations in the data, and if there's any big outliers, you kind of go, oh, he's, he's an idiot. Don't pay attention to him. Um, but yeah, it's kind of, we're hoping that we've got a large enough kind of data input that really big outliers are kind of insignificant once we analyze it all.
And I don't know if you need to wait for microphones and things. Uh, this is more of an observation. So you said right. you are kind of like feeding back. Then you could tell off those outliers that their sound is not actually punchy. <laughs> <laughs> Give them an example of a punchy sound. <laughs> so so, so they, they say you've punched and you, you know, that's not punchy, mate. <laughs> this is punchy. Um, <laughs> yeah? Looks like you're trying to make this punchy. That's actually another thing we're, we're looking at doing. And I need to bring that up with my supervisor that um, we're going to be the Microsoft Paperclip. Because we have this kind of cool idea that we can, we can monitor how people are moving parameters and then say, Looks like you're trying to make this punchy. Do you want to make it? We are, yeah. We're a Microsoft paperclip of audio. That's going on the website. Um, you talk, you're doing audio analysis and logging a whole bunch of data about the incoming signal. Yeah. Do you also analyze when you're loading so that you can adjust the parameters appropriately for a slightly different so, signal? So, not currently, but that is in the pipeline. So, it's kind of, I mean, at the moment, we're relying on metadata. So, if someone says, I want to load the, uh, you know, warm for a base, we, we do it that way. But uh, at some point, we'll be like, oh, look, you're starting with a, sim a signal similar to these other ones that were processed. Here's you know what people did to make those warm type of things. Yeah. And no more else? questions. Okay. Cool. Well, thanks a lot. Thanks, guys. <laughs>